Hello, and welcome back to Female Founder World, a space where entrepreneurial women learn how to start and grow a business. It's your host, Jasmine here, and today I speak with Shireen Bucknam. She runs the show over at Crypto Witch Club. They're creating an inclusive, equitable space to learn about all things Web3, and that's really what we're diving into today. So Shireen chats about two kind of separate topics. The first is how she's going about building her community. And if you're someone who you feel like community is going to play a big role in how you build your brand and your business, you'll learn a lot from what she shares here. But then of course, we also tap into her knowledge of Web3. So whether you're super new to the space or if you have kind of delved a little bit into crypto, she shares some really interesting thoughts on how founders of consumer brands can get involved. And if you are really interested in this space, if you enjoy the conversation with Shireen, I'd like to invite you to a workshop. We're hosting it on Monday, the 21st of February at 6.30 p.m. And we are going to be covering everything that founders of consumer brands need to know so that they can use NFTs within their own business or at least understand the landscape and how NFTs might apply to growing their community or even funding their business. It's going to be a super tactical conversation. Uh, We also have a special guest founder of a food company who recently launched an NFT project and she's going to kind of walk us through how she got started and how it's impacted her business and her community. So I think you guys are going to really love it. If you want to join, you can learn more and you can sign up by following us on Instagram at Female Founder World. There's a ton more information there and a link in the bio to sign up and get started. All righty, let's get into the show. Shireen, welcome to the show. Uh, Before we kind of get into all things Web3 and crypto, I just wanted to invite you to kind of let listeners know what it is that you're creating over at Crypto Witch Club. Sure. My name's Shereen Carmel Bucknam, and I and my business partner are creating a fun educational safe space for everybody to come learn about blockchain tech without any negative vibes. Love that. All about the positive vibes at Female Founder World as well. Obviously, we're going to really get into the NFT, crypto, Web3 questions in a little bit. But first of all, like our listeners are founders. They're people who are creating community online themselves for their own businesses. And I think that what you have done in such a short amount of time is really impressive. And when I go to your, for example, your Instagram account, I know exactly what you're about straight away. Like I can see exactly like what the brand is all about. Everything that you've just said there is embodied in the visuals, in the way that you speak. And I know that your background's in marketing and advertising. So I'm just really keen to understand like what is the process? Do you go about planning and externalizing your vision for an online community before you actually launch? What does that look like? So I think the key about launching successfully and having a strong vision is kind of just you have to put it into action and not get hung up on the details. So I, my background's in like marketing and advertising, my business partner's background is in marketing and graphic design. We went to college together and then we worked, we launched an agency and we worked there together for eight years. Um, so this was just a natural evolution of how we put other people's brands together, but for the first time ourselves. So I think what's key is determine, make a mood board, make a style, determine exactly what you look like, what you sound like, and decide who you think your audience might be, but don't be super attached because without data, you don't really know. Don't get hung up on logos and color combinations and those details. Make sure you have something that's strong and fits best practices, but you do not need to to test out 20 different colors of the logo. You can always change it in the future. I mean, Google has done how many logo changes or McDonald's or Starbucks. And then I think really keep everything really lean and start with testing. 
we just created a few pieces of content. You know, we put together a logo that we loved and we thought was clear and got our point across. And we put together, you know, a two sentence pitch about what we did. And then we made sure people were into it. And we saw what parts were the most responded to before we built that out. So I would say just keep it lean, do a lot of action and just hit all the steps, but don't get caught up in, you know, a color or a logo or a font. Your vision around, you know, creating an equitable space to discuss NFTs, Web3, crypto, it really comes across in the way that you speak. I love that you use plain language. You speak to people the way that we speak to each other on Instagram. You are like doing all the fun pop culture references. I just think that really just ties so nicely into what you're doing. Because if you want to bring new audiences into that space, you need to speak how that audience is already speaking. Totally. Yeah. I think it's really important not to alienate people. And I think I always thought finance as a whole was so complicated until I I got into it. And I got into it really after crypto, you know, getting into all the traditional finances even, and just seeing that it actually wasn't that complicated. People were just making it seem like it was a highly curated skill, but a lot of it is just basic math and just, you know, knowing fundamentals and knowing what you hold. Yeah. What was your kind of path to becoming so well-versed in all things crypto and Web3? I just put the hours in. So when I started in 2017, I was like essentially like challenged. Like I had a friend who's just kind of like, good luck. You know, it's intense. And, you know, that friend had seen people kind of get in and then pull their money out when fluctuated the markets. And he was kind of like, I'm not listening to anybody else complain about crypto. But I used that as fuel. And I just was like, cool. Like, I'm going to be really good at this just to like prove this to this one person, like I can do it too. And it was like the competitive vibes came out where I kind of wanted just to prove myself. And yeah, I put in the hours, I did the research and it was not easy in 2017. There were a lot of resources, but it was really difficult to find the resources to trust. You know, DeFi wasn't even around yet. NFTs weren't even around Um, A lot of projects, even projects with high market caps, um, they were still in that early phase where the utility wasn't in action. So a lot of it was kind of, you know, betting on a horse or betting on the concept. Um, But, you know, you just have to put the hours in and really learn about what's important and what's not. I think it's just as important to recognize what's noise as it is to recognize what's crucial information. I think that distinction is like the first thing you have to do, like turn off crypto Twitter, you know, and like really look at like the deep resources that are not sales-based. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, like in 2017, to me, that sounds like it was pretty early. I feel like 2017, my thoughts on crypto, it would have been Bitcoin, kind of sketchy, don't know what this is all about. And the the impression now that I have of that space is so, so different. And that's obviously because of people like you who have really made it more accessible and and I'm speaking in kind of like plain English about, about what it's all about. So I wanted to like jump into like a couple of definitions. So people who are really new to this conversation and you know what, if you're listening and you, you feel like you're a little bit better versed in all things Web3 and crypto, skip the next 15, 30 seconds. But for those of you who are new to it, Shireen, could you give us a bit of a definition and like not to put you on the spot, but what is, for example, what is blockchain and how does that, and how does it interact with cryptocurrency? Sure. So blockchain is essentially like the train tracks then cryptocurrency runs on top of. Brilliant analogy. <laughs> yeah, my business partner came up with it one day. She said it like out of the blue <laughs> and we were both like, yeah, perfect. Done. And it's true to what it is. So each blockchain can have a coin and tokens can also run on these blockchains. Tokens are 
a type of cryptocurrency that just doesn't have its own individual blockchain. So a cryptocurrency coin has its own unique blockchain, like Bitcoin runs on the Bitcoin blockchain, or Ethereum runs on the Ethereum blockchain, but there are a lot of tokens such as Doge or Link that also run on the Ethereum blockchain. So that kind of, I think, gives a visual of how these parts work together. You can have blockchain without cryptocurrency, but you cannot have cryptocurrency without blockchain. And okay, and then how do NFTs fit into this whole picture? So NFTs are essentially, it can be art, but it can be anything. It can be a, a house deed. It can be an album, like a musical album. It can be a digital magazine, but essentially it is digital assets that run the blockchain that have unique token identifiers. So when it runs in the blockchain, that means you can set, for example, if it's traded, if it runs on the Ethereum blockchain, it can be held in an Ethereum wallet. You can trade it on that blockchain to other people. And that's what shows it's unique. And it also um, shows it's secure because it can't be uh, copied or transferred or it's fully secure on the blockchain, which is also the necessary part of cryptocurrency as a whole, because without that layer of security that cryptocurrency provides, you can't have decentralized currency because you would need that centralized banking figure. Let's talk about that, uh, you know, inability to copy it. I think that there's a common misconception, a bit of a myth out there about, hey, like this NFT business, I can just screenshot this. I can right click and save and look, I own it too. Why is that wrong? Yeah, I love this convo. Um, I think the thing is people don't realize and it's more than just art. It's actually very much a club card. If you look at traditional NFTs in terms of, let's say there's 10,000 available degenerative art and kind of that format, um, just because that's an easy format to explore for people's first time. You can right click it all you want, but if it doesn't, if you don't have the actual uh, image that's on the blockchain, you can't store it. You can't show somebody. It doesn't have a token ID. It's not authenticated. And I love it when people are like, I right clicked a bunch of NFTs. And I think that's so great because I'm like, yes, yeah, spread it around. It's like press. Like you can go take a photo with an Andy Warhol painting or like a print, right? And say, this is my Warhol. Check it out. But you don't, you can't sell it. You don't own it. You know, I could go to Beyonce's house and like chill inside and tell all my friends who was my new place, but I don't have the deed to the house. That is such a good way of explaining it. Yeah, I could have that replica or that kind of staged vibe, but it's just not authentic at the end of the day. I'm really just providing free marketing and free PR to that real NFT holder. I'm just making it a prestige item. All these people right clicking are just making those NFTs more powerful. So I'm like, knockoffs. Yeah, right click away. Like, go to Canal Street, get those right clicks. <laughs> like, I am all for it because to me, it's just like publicity. If that's your NFT getting right clicked, like, snaps for you. Okay, that's a brilliant, that is a brilliant explanation. I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, the folks listening, they are mostly going to be founders of consumer brands. They own some kind of business. And I'm, I think when people think NFTs, they're like, they immediately go to art because that's kind of how it started getting a little bit of buzz and people started understanding the concept of what NFTs were tied to art. How can consumer brands use NFTs to either build community generate revenue? How are brands doing this at the moment? I think brands are really just starting to figure it out. And actually my business partner and I were talking earlier today about how, like what comes first, the brand or the consumer in like the metaverse NFT space. Do we, because for example, Sotheby's, they have their own metaverse now it's proprietary. They basically, people can go in, visit the digital Sotheby's, you know, luxury auction house, and they can pop inside and tap on different works and learn about them. And to us, we're like, wow, this is so interesting because I don't think Sotheby's 
main customer who's spending all this money is hanging out on Decentraland or in the sandbox. That's not their customer, but it was such a brilliant branding schematic because they took their luxury customer and then they showed they could really be light. And I mean, when do you think of Sotheby's and think about having like this really personalized fun visit, you know, you kind of go in a little more reverent. If you go in in real life, you're kind of quiet, you look at the wine, you know, auctions, but in the metaverse, Sotheby's becomes a fun brand that you feel a connection to. Other brands, I think, you know, a big thing what people miss is NFTs are so about community. So that NFT is granting you access in most cases to a club of some sort. So it's kind of like Soho House. And I think Soho House is a cool example because in the future, Soho House will definitely be issuing NFTs to their members and maybe instead of like their club cards. And similarly, if you look at things like um, Alpha Girl Club, which is another NFT or the NFT we hold and we love, they're all about mental health and like supporting the community and mental health initiatives. So they have a mental health app. They have giveaways and trips to Tokyo. They have events, digital events every single night from like mindful meditation to sound baths. So you get this access and this key to this amazing club. And I think what's really important for people planning to do this or like brainstorming how they could utilize NFTs or the metaverse with their brands I think the most important thing as a small business or small brand owner is to make sure the community experience is in place before launching an NFT project and the roadmap. So even if the roadmap has really exciting things in the future, you should also be able to deliver on community things right when people join and provide that value. It's just like starting a community on TikTok or community on YouTube, like you have to provide value to your community if you want your project to be successful. So it's really interesting because that just gives the space another, the art space, just another layer of intrigue, I guess we could say. It really makes it a more three-dimensional world than if you just see it as like collecting, collecting JPEGs, quote unquote. Yeah. Yeah. And for folks listening who are like, oh, this is really interesting. It's kind of going over my head a little bit, but I want to learn more. Uh, Shireen and I are hosting a workshop with some of the founders in the female founder world community where we're going to go over way more detail about how to get started as a brand founder with NFTs. And we're also going to have a case study from a founder who has done it before and exactly walking through how she's done it. So if you stick around to the end of the show, um, there'll be instructions about how to sign up for that one as well. But that's just a little aside. Shireen, I wanted to ask a little bit more about your own community that you're building. You've kind of like touched on just there how NFTs can help, you know, they're integral to, to community building. What is the plan for Crypto Witch Club. Are you going to start a closed community? Are you going to do courses? Like what can people expect from you? Yeah. So Crypto Witch Club is really twofold. So half of it is all for the community. We want to provide free education always, but we also want to provide assets and opportunities if people want to get more in depth. Um, So we just launched our first guide, which is 16 coins for 2022. And it's all the coins that we think are really impactful, have amazing technology, and you know are likely to appreciate this year. So we're really excited about that. Um, it's super fun, very color-coded and graphic, as you can imagine. Love that. And then we do have plans to do a closed subscription-based community um, in the spring, but we're still kind of learning from our audience and seeing what people want and what they don't want. So one thing I'd love to do is have like a job board. So if you want to work in crypto or you want to work in blockchain, there's something really curated and vetted that people can can come to and find. And then another thing is a lot of people have asked us for more trading technicals and that information. So I feel like that'll be a fun subscription thing to test. So once we have a full content plan, we'll definitely be, be trying that out. But in the meantime, we have the guides. We're launching one a month. And then 
we have our blog on Medium and our Instagram is always like an easy way to learn and save the coins that you need to know. I think you do really well with a closed community. I think that there are so many people who are like me and they don't, you know, aren't super well versed in in the language of finance and therefore have kind of maybe been like slower to to understanding crypto than I would other trends in the kind of like the tech space because it just felt so finance broy. But I'm I would be so interested in joining a community like that and being part of people like me discussing something that's super interesting and is going to be, it's going to shape the world that we live in for the next hundred years. Totally. I think you have to also, a lot of people feel that way. Almost everybody I talk to who's kind of in it, but not fully immersed, immersed. This is something along those lines. And it's, it's because you have to kind of break your brain and restart learning finance and how we think about money and our autonomy and our how close it is to us um, in a new way. Like we've never had the option to not have a bank before unless you kept money, you know, in your sofa or under your couch or whatever, and you're under your mattress. But for the first time, like you can have self-custody and that's really confusing. Yeah, absolutely. So for people who are like, they've heard you talk about this, they're really interested and they want to kind of dip their toe in this world for the first time, where do they go? What do they do? What do you recommend for people who just want to kind of get started? So in terms of resources or in terms of more like steps one, two, and three? Steps one, two, and three, I think. Like, let's say they don't have a wallet. They've never bought crypto before. They are interested in buying an NFT. They just have no idea where to start. What do they do? I love it. So number one, pick your exchange. Coinbase and Gemini are great for beginners. And we have referral links on our website to get for $10 free Bitcoin. Um, if you are just starting out, yeah, those are the two I'd recommend. Um, number two, based on that exchange that you picked, whichever you feel most comfortable with, pick the projects that feel right to you. So if you are somebody who is very environmentally conscious and you want to limit your footprint, you're going to want to pick a proof of stake project because that's going to have less environmental implications because you're minting instead of mining. Um, it's a technical world word. Or if you're a big gamer, you're going to want to invest in Decentraland or something like that. Um, and then once you pick your projects, you just keep researching the market purchase them, buy them. It's really easy on these apps. I would consider the difficulty level is like opening up an online savings account on an app. You know, it's the same uh, vibes, but yeah. So just pick the exchange, pick your project, buy it, and then keep learning about it. Learn about the other projects. And what I've seen with a lot of my friends is once they purchase or trade for the first time. Um, and a lot of them, I mean, I would recommend like Ethereum or Bitcoin are really safe. I mean, obviously still volatile, but a lot safer as there's such high market capitalizations. But with my friends, I noticed after they purchase the first time, they start watching on the app and kind of seeing the movement and getting more familiar with it. And then they're able to kind of see the coins they're interested in because they're spending more time on there, or they're able to recognize patterns um, of other altcoins. So I think once you dip into the water, it's a lot easier. It's just that first step of getting in the ecosystem. And even if it's 20 bucks, just bite the bullet. Because if you lose 20 bucks at the, the end of the day, fine, you learn something. I mean, that's the price of a cocktail in New York. So it's just worth it, even if it's just an experimentation. What do you say to people who think they're already too late? I mean, so many people told me I was too late in 2017. And um, I almost thought I was. And then it, I wasn't. So <laughs> it was like this one year of doubt after so many people told me I was too late and the price kept dropping. And I was like, maybe they're right. I had some, you know, self-doubt. But I was like, you know what? If they're right, I'll just lose all my money. Like at that point, I was just like, I put this in knowing I like be comfortable if you lose it. So I was like, well, I'm not going to take it out now. 
then I've, it's dipped so much and I've lost so much. It was like late 2018 probably. And I was buying Ethereum at like $90 for, for reference. So I kept buying stuff and I was just like, I'm crazy. Like, like, let me see, like last, this will be the last year. If not, I'll just stop. But you know, it, it works out. It really is four year cycles. So if you get in, you know, give yourself four years before you like fear dip out for sure, because the markets are going to go up and they historically, they have gone up the crypto markets long-term the past 10 years as a whole, but um, they're going to go down too. So you'll see both. Yeah, absolutely. And Shireen, where can people find you on Instagram and your website if they want to dive into the resources that you've created? Yeah, so we're at cryptowitchclub.io or on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Medium at Crypto Witch Club. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. That was awesome. So much great information packaged exactly the way that I want to hear it. So I'm sure everyone really loved that.